Okay, let's, uh, you know, it's been a while since I've done a video. I don't know if it's the weather or what, but uh, it gets hot in the garage and I'm just not in the mood to do anything. And I didn't really plan on doing this particular video, but um, I thought it was kind of important. But let's talk about print shift a little bit. Um, a while ago, I did a video on how to fix parts that had shifted. And print shift is something that I've been plagued with ever since I got my printer many, many, many years ago. And I recently saw a video. Um, I can't remember who did it. I'll, I'll put a, a picture of a, their screenshot for the video, like, here. And if I remember, I'll put a link to the video in the description of this one. But one of the comments on that video, a lot of people commenting say they never get print shifting. Well, if you never get print shifting, then that's great. Why are you watching these videos? Um, so that, that sounded rude. I didn't mean it that way. But um, if you never have problems with print shifting, that, that's, that's awesome. But a lot of people do, like me. Uh, somebody else commented and said, that they only get print shift if a belt slips or if a pulley slips because a set screw was loose. And that's an easy fix. Tighten up your machine. You know, that's all you got to do there is make sure your machine's tight and your belts are on proper. Of all of the print shifts I have had, none of them have been because of a loose belt or a pulley. Now, the video that, I put the, that I'm talking about that I saw is talking about a closed-loop stepper motor. Well, the stepper motor is a normal stepper motor, but there's a circuit board on the back that's, that's, that's looking at the rotation of the servo. So the servo itself has a circuit board that makes it closed loop, meaning it knows where it is. And if something happens that would normally cause a print shift, then it will continue to try to get to that position. The, the other video I watched, he explains it like really well. And so I bought two of those servos. I got them installed on my printer behind me here in a minute. We'll go take a look at it and, and I'll show you how it works and I'll show you what I had to do to my printer to, the, to install them. But here's a few examples of some printed, um, of some shifted prints. And now I did a video a while ago about how to fix prints that were shifted. And again, if I remember, I'll put a link to that in the description of this one or I'll put a picture of the screenshot of the video here. But this one wasn't really saveable the way I did in that other video. Now in the other video I said if you cut it off and then put it back you can fix it. This one really wasn't fixable plus to slice it off would have been a little bit tedious but um, this one really wasn't fixable. Now why did this one shift? That's a good question. I'm not really sure. Um, it wasn't because something on the printer was loose. I think what happened with this one, and what happens with a lot of mine, here's another one. Here's another one that shifted. And you can tell it just it, it shifted both X and Y. And um, again, this one I, I possibly could have cut and repositioned, but this was something I was printing for a friend of mine, so I didn't really want any um, didn't really want any glitches or mistakes in it. You know, I wanted it to be a nice continuous print and not a not a repaired print. Um, so I started that one over. And again, why did it do this? For this one, I don't have a clue why it did this. Um, but let's talk about some of the reasons why I experience print shift. Um, one of them is, if I print a part that has uh, curves, like for example, this uh, is my, uh, my current project I'm working on now. When this is printing on the bed this way, it's got this curve going around with a lot of support material underneath, and this one actually shifted as well, um, but not very bad. It was only like half a millimeter that way, and I was able to just sand it smooth and redo the lines, and, and, and I was able to repair it, I was able to fix it. But it actually did have a little bit of a shift. The reason why, for me, curved parts like this shift is because when it's printing, let's say here's the print bed, and it's building up this part, and it's curving around, and it's curving around, and it's got support material here holding that up, this edge right here will actually start to kind of curl up. I guess it's as it's cooling or shrinking, that edge will curl up. 
then the nozzle comes along and catches that and it causes the whole print to shift. Because again, once it hits that and the motor like skips, um, the system just doesn't know where it is anymore and it just continues to go. That might have been what happened here. Um, maybe it hit one of those corners here and caught it. Um, I don't know. Um, I didn't see this when it happened, so I don't know why it did this. This one, I have no idea why I did it. Sometimes when I get print shift, I think it's just a complete random glitch. Uh, I don't know if it's the, um, the, the, the G code or maybe the firmware and the, uh, the controller. It almost just seems like a random glitch, which is going along and then it just decides, oh, I want to be over here for some reason. Um, I don't know if these closed loop steppers will fix that or not. If it's just a glitch that makes it move over, Will that closed loop system detect that? I, I don't know. I guess I'll find out soon enough. But as far as this catching it, it should fix that. You know, these closed loop steppers should um, be able to overcome this issue here and keep on going. Um, now, these steppers that I'm using, the video that I watched, uh, he explained very thoroughly how to set it up. So what I did, and what I recommend to you guys, is watch his video. I don't want to take any uh, glory or credit from this guy. Um, but go watch his video. Again, I'll put a link to it. And as you're watching it, just make notes along the way so that when you set yours up, you can follow your notes and kind of have your instructions. But these are from Big Tree, yeah, Big Tree Tech. They're the S42B version 1. Uh, but basically, you remove your normal drivers and all the jumpers that are under the drivers for your... Um, um, micro stepping and you got to change your firmware to tell it you, you need to default the firmware to the a4988 drivers mine was already there my firmware was already set to that so I didn't have to do anything to the firmware and um, if it doesn't home properly um, I just marked you know minute 10 in the video explains what to do there mine homed okay actually it didn't really I had to reverse one of them but on the driver board for the stepper motors, which we'll take a look at here in a second, there is a series of dip switches. And so again, I watch this video, I just went step one, step two, step three. Basically, you turn on the number four dip, strip, dip switch, all the others are off. You plug in the screen and turn on the printer. You have a series of buttons on the side of the circuit board. Use the middle button to toggle between the info display and the menu. The lower button scrolls through the menus and then the top button will select what you want. So you need to select calibrate. So use the middle button to select menu, and then you use the bottom button to scroll until it says calibrate, and then you, you use the top button to enter calibrate, and it'll take a few minutes. Your motor will slowly turn one way, then the other way. Then after the confirmation, you press the reset push button, which, which again, you have three buttons. You got the top, middle, and the lower, and then you have one over here, that's the reset button. So that one's reset. So after, the, after you get confirmation of the uh, calibration, you press the reset button. Then you turn off the printer, you remove the screen, turn number four dip switch off, turn the number three dip switch on. You gotta remember to do that. Setting number three dip switch on is what actually gives you the closed loop feedback stuff. Then you reinstall the screen, turn on your printer, you should be good to go. You can also go through the menus to set your um, current, and they give you choices of all different milliamps or current. Now, I, I don't want to fault or say anything negative about the other video that I saw because he showed how to do all that, but he didn't tell you what current to set. The current that you set depends on the stepper motors. Now the motors, uh, when I bought my two motors, I only bought one for X and one for Y. When I bought mine, I bought it installed on the motors. You can buy just the circuit boards only, put it on your motors, that's fine. I went ahead and bought it already installed onto the motors, so I had to go back to their website and see the specs on their motors, and they called for 800 milliamps. So on the circuit board on the screen, you have to set 1600, because for some weird reason, I have no idea why, you're gonna run half of what you actually set. So if you buy this system installed on the motors, you need to set your current on your display screen, you need to set that current to 1600 milliamps. And as far as micro-stepping, you got a choice of uh, 32, 16, um, I guess eight or like whatever. Um, I set mine to 16. I read online that if you set it to 32, it can slow things down. 
plus the older older uh, controllers or processors might not be able to handle that very well. So I just set my micro stepping to 16, and that seems to be working pretty well. Uh, so just a few other things that might help you if you decide to get the uh, big green tech S42B closed loop motors. Now, um, again, back to slipping pulleys or skipping belts. These will not fix that, right? You need to get your machine tight if you're having problems like this because of your, of your machine. You need to fix that stuff first, right? So this won't help that, all right? So actually my print just finished. Let me get another print started and then I'll take over to the print and I'll show you um, how these things, uh, how these things work. Okay, so there's my X motor one. See if I can get the focus better. And there's a little display screen. Now that display screen is optional. Uh, you don't have to, you don't have to get the display screen, but if you don't, then you have to connect there. You have to connect that to your laptop or not your laptop, or your computer to like set it up and program it. I didn't want to mess with that. So I got the screen here. You can see the uh, buttons on the side. So there's your three buttons on the side and the reset button is up under there. Again, that screen just pulls on and off um, pretty easily. It's just got some pins, just pulls off, and all the dip switches are underneath of it. And one thing I want you to notice now, the way that screen looks, there's three lines. Um, you've got uh, RPM, error, and degrees. Um, and notice what that looks like because I'm actually having a problem with mine. When I start printing, those fonts kind of get messed up. The Y motor over here, am I gonna be able to see it? Kinda of see it back under right there. You can see that display is lit. Again, I'm having issues with that display. More on that in just a little bit. Now, I'm using the Folger Tech Prusa i3 with the aluminum frame. In order to fit the Y motor, move that out of the way. In order to fit the Y motor, I had to move hand out of the way. I had to move that rod over to the left about a half an inch. Otherwise it would have hit the circuit board on the back of the motor back there. That was actually fairly easy. I just moved the mounting block where it screws to the bottom of the table. I moved that over. There's already a hole on the edge there. So I moved it over to that last hole and I had to drill another hole on the aluminum bed here. So I had to drill another hole for the screw. And of course you just loosen these blocks and shift it over. It used to be here. You can kind of see that line where it used to be. So it used to be here. I just moved it over about three quarters of an inch, I guess. And that was all I had to do in order to get that motor back there to fit. So as far as modifying the machine, that's all I had to do. Uh, one other thing. These, with this new setup here, um, you will need to adjust your steps per millimeter because they were off. So, so I test printed a 50 millimeter cube and X and Y instead of 50 millimeters, there were 38 millimeters. So I just had to adjust the steps per millimeter there to get that to work properly. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and start a print. I'll just do that 50 millimeter cube again. And once it starts printing, I'll get back with you and show you how these things work. Okay, so I just started a, um, just a test cube print and um, so far, this display here is working fine. Occasionally at random, it's like the font will change and it basically makes all the digits taller or bigger. So it cuts off the top half of that first line and the bottom line kind of doubles up on itself. So that's just kind of a random glitch I get with this one. And this one over here on the Y axis, you see that screen, I know it's hard to see, but that screen is now completely blank. The moment I start printing, that screen goes blank. Now I did swap that screen with this one, and when that screen is over here, it goes blank here. So it's the screen that's, it's, that's at fault. It's, um, since the problem follows the screen, then it's a faulty screen, not a faulty board that is plugged into. So I contacted Big Green Tech, let him know what was happening, and they are sending me two new boards. Because again, the digits here keep glitching every once in a while, and that one just goes completely blank. So they are sending me two new boards. Um, so 
they do have, so far from what I can tell, they do have pretty good um, customer support. But let me show you what's happening or how these kind of work. Um, now, I'm, I'm not going to smack mine with a mallet um, like somebody else did, but if I wanted to simulate something jamming it or blocking it. Oh, and also I noticed with these new motors, it runs a lot slower. I've actually got it cranked up to like 176% just to get it to a normal speed. But if I just hold it so it can't move, so I'm blocking it, watch what happens here. See, it just picked right back up where it was. Didn't miss anything. I'm gonna do that again. And see, it just goes right back to where it was. And it doesn't matter how long, so I'm just gonna hold it there. So it's trying to move, I'm just blocking it. So you do get a straight line there, but as soon as it gets where it needs to go, it just catches right back up again. And notice it's not shifted at all anymore. So if something jams it or binds it, um, it'll just pick right back up where it needs to be, and no problem. So they actually work pretty well. I'll try this one. I'm going to block it about here. So I'm going to block that there, and it just goes right back. Keeps on going. Now it would be pointless to put one for the extruder, because if your extruder jams, I, that's, that's not going to fix that. And it would almost be pointless to put it for the Z-axis motors. Um, I've never had an issue with the Z-axis motors. So I just bought the two. Now that setup, circuit board, the screen, and the motor, uh, was 25 bucks for one. So again, I got two is 50 bucks. The guy in the other video that I keep talking about, he kind of misspoke and he said you get four for 25 bucks. Um, I think he said you get four. Yeah, I think he said you get four for 25 bucks. He just misspoke. He corrected himself in the comments and in the video description he corrected himself, but people still keep commenting about what he meant by that. And uh, so just, you know, letting you know, he, he just misspoke, no problem, no big deal. So anyways, um, hopefully this is helpful for some of you. Hopefully it helps you make a decision on if you want to buy those or not. Um, they are cheap, so I've been having, you know, issues with displays, so just keep that in mind, that is a possibility. So um, hopefully it helps some of you. If not, no worries. And until next time, thanks for watching. Oh, and I forgot to mention, sometimes I get a print skip or, or layer shift because of my fault, my problem. What the heck happened there? That'll eh, fix. Because um, sometimes, like while it's printing, I'll mess with it. Like if I want to change filament or if I get like a weird bump that I think will cause problems, I'll go in there and sand it off while it's printing. And sometimes I bump it, sometimes I knock it off of alignment and it's just hard to get it back where it should be. So sometimes it's my fault. And those will fix my, my mistakes if I, if I bump it or if I make it move while I'm changing filament or something like that. So yeah, this'll, this'll fix that as well. So anyways, like I said, I need to restart that print <laughs> because it's, um, yeah, that's not right. It may fix itself, but some of that is like not sticking to the glass. So I think I need to clean the glass and um, try that again. So anyways, at least it's only the first layer it just started. So um, if only they could make something that would fix that. Anyways, like I said before, thanks for watching.